segueing into our second movie, another great director, Louis Milestone. Um, talk about Millie Milestone, the man and the director, and then talk about how this A Walk in the Sun got produced. Very unique production if, that you told me about. Well, A Walk in the Sun, I'll cut to the chase. <laughs> Milestone was agreed to do this picture based on Harry Brown's book. Sam Bronston was the producer. We started shooting and at the end of the first week Sam Bronston didn't have enough money to pay the cast. And uh, Dana Andrews was just on this picture. He wanted to get paid. Yeah. And uh, as a result of that, uh, Bronston was dropped as producer, and Milestone had to look around for money. So he kept shooting. He wasn't going to stop shooting. And he reached into his pocket at the end of the first week and paid the entire payroll, cast and crew, out of his own pocket. Meanwhile, he was searching around for backing. Now we're into the second week, and he's still searching, and we're still shooting, and it's a beautiful script and beautiful picture, but he hasn't got the money for the second week. He reaches into his pocket, pays the second week, and this is as far as he could go. When someone put him in touch with a fellow from who, how to put it delicately, knew a number of characters in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, the character who represented them had a bar, the 19th hole on Melrose. And Millie met up with this fellow. And Millie had great charm, particularly he had a great rapport with men. He had done, of course, All Quiet on the Western Front, which is one of the genuine masterpieces ever produced in this town. So he knew how to talk to this particular fellow. And the fellow said, uh, yes, he would come in and uh, pick up the necessary change. Now, Walk in the Sun, as you will see, is about a young group of soldiers, 20, 21, the youngest group marching through this area in Italy. After this gentleman said he would come in with backing, suddenly I played the point on the squad, the guy out front walking. And I look back one day, and this young squad had aged. <laughs> they looked very much like a Las Vegas squad. <laughs> they were older, they were needed shaves. <laughs> Not beards, they just needed to be shaved. And they started a traveling crap game every morning before we started shooting. <laughs> As a matter of fact, one day, Milestone got the game, more than one day. And he was, my favorite moment with that is he was shooting and he was behind 20 bucks, which 20 bucks meant a little more. And the assistant came up and said, we're ready for the shot, Mr. Milestone. And Billy said, get away from me, get away. <laughs> Give me the dice. Come on. He was buying 20 bucks, and we didn't start shooting till he got even. <laughs> anyway, 
this gentleman, I don't think it's a secret, he had been uh, in jail. He was the kind of fellow who said, you know, whenever I go to a bank, I leave the motor of my car running. <laughs> He's a gentleman who the show needed fifty thousand dollars at a certain point, not at the beginning, but right. into it. Right. So he went up to the bank and he had fifty thousand, fifty one thousand dollar bills, <laughs> and he put them down. The teller said, "Excuse me, sir, um, I have to find out where there's a governmental rule now, which still exists and started with the war. Every time you deposit a thousand dollar bill, you have to explain the thousand, where you got it. Mm -hmm. So they said to Johnny, I have to explain where you got this 50,000, the thousand dollar bills. And Johnny said, I'm, I'm not telling you. <laughs> the teller said, I'm sorry, then I have to keep them. Yeah. Johnny said, okay, he walked away. He left $50,000 in there. Rather than reveal where he'd gotten them. <laughs> uh, so with this, the picture got done, and then Milestone had to find someone to release it. Correct? Well, yes, he had to find someone to release it. And he finally went to Daryl Zanuck. And the reason he went to Zanuck and felt he would get a break there, which he got, is that when Milestone, it was in the, towards the end of the 20s, just before sound, Jack Warner said to Milestone, who had been the, one of the best cutters on the lot, I, I know they're now called editors, <laughs> but they were called cutters in those days. And uh, Milestone said to Wardy, one do a picture, one direct. So Jack Warner said, okay, who's going to write this? And Millie said, well, you know, there's this fellow who sits on the iron steps outside the stages and writes the Rin Tin Tin pictures. And Warren apparently was slightly taken aback by a, a writer on Rin Tin Tin writing a feature picture. So he said, well, who is this guy? And Millie said, Daryl Zanuck. His name is Daryl Zanuck. And he wrote that first picture for Millie. There was always, therefore, this relationship so that when Millie went to him with A Walk of the Sun, he gave it the release. Uh, it's a great picture and a, a really a fine cast. The two of the stars that, uh, that, that really hold up well are Dana Andrews and Richard Conde, or I should call him Nick Conde, yeah. that's, that was his real, but I remember doing some research on Conde for something I wrote, and I found out that you apparently gave the eulogy at Richard Conde's uh, memorial, is that correct? You, you, you spoke at Richard Conde's memorial, is that correct? I spoke at his memorial. Yeah, yeah, what, what, talk a little bit about Dana and the type of person and actor he was, Dana and Nick Conde. Because they're two of my favorites. I'm being selfish. Dana was a remarkable man. He was a he was a wonderful man. You could give him a page, solid page of dialogue. In the theater, I used to I once did a play with Mark Connolly, and in rehearsals, he'd bring in new pages every day and say, "Your daily paper." <laughs> Well, we had this with Milestone, not to that extent, not to that extreme, but Dana could memorize a solid page in 20 minutes and not miss a word. He was incredible. He had 
a wonderful character. He was, I thought, a very fine actor. I mean, mm -hmm. particularly in, uh, not only in our picture, but- Laura, Best Years of Our Lives, which is yeah. magnificent. Yeah. yeah. So, Dana just had one problem. He could knock off a bottle of booze in short order. And sometimes that caused him to sleep late in the morning. So Milestone and I would, I would always drive out with Milestone, would sit waiting for him and the little girl, his daughter, would come running out and saying, Daddy is still sleeping. So we didn't have to wait, but Millie loved him and he couldn't do, he could do no wrong. And it, Millie used him all the time, yes. several pictures. Yeah. Nick Conte was a boy out of Jersey City whose father was a barber. And uh, Nick was a pretty good barber himself. Really? Yeah. And uh, Nick was very much of the streets. He was a terrific card player and uh, he brought a great, street quality to mm -hmm. what he played. But there was a sensitivity in Nick, almost not a feminine quality, but a very unique. Yeah. I'll tell you, we could, I could do this like the rest of the evening, and I, I would like to, but we do have a second show. But before that, uh, we know that it was your birthday on November 8th. And it's a little after the fact, but I hope everyone will join me in singing Happy Birthday to Norman. So here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Norman. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable Mr. Norman Lloyd, and stick around for our second feature in a couple minutes. Thank you so much for coming tonight.